So I need a table right here. I want to test out my entire electrical system for the teardrop and I want to lay all that out on a big table. Now I don't have a table and I don't want to do it on the floor, but I also don't want anything like big and permanent that is always going to take up room. I want something that I can disassemble when I'm not using it. So what would be the best way of doing that? Well, maybe sawhorses. Two sturdy sawhorses where I can put a sheet of MDF or plywood or whatever I have on hand, use as a table, and then take apart what I'm not using. So I have my big CNC machine back here. So I was thinking the best thing would be if I could design something where I could make two sawhorses on one sheet of plywood. And I really want to make it where the pieces fit together. It's like a click system. Let's get working on the design because that's always the thing that matters most when it comes to CNC work getting your design right. So this is the design that I'm working with right now. And as you can see, it is one big A. And that's what I really love about plywood. The fact that you can make any weird shapes and stuff that you wouldn't be able to do with like regular lumber. Um, and the idea here is to have these little crenellations, I call them. Um, but basically they're like little pockets where other wood pieces fit. So here you have the side pieces. And then here you have these long pieces that fit into these. So basically for the top here, I'm making like an I-beam where I'm putting the, the plywood this way for additional strength. And then I have another piece on top here and they fit together. This is the first piece that has these little pockets and it goes in and then this piece fits on top. And this connects to this and this one also connects to the sides here. So once you assemble it, it should be like one big puzzle that fits together that you could even assemble without glue if you wanted to. Another thing to note here is how I've inset uh, some of this joinery so that they're not like on the sides where they can break out. So it's a little bit stronger, like here too, there's a little bit of a distance here. This is the sheet of plywood that I'm using. This is a three quarter inch. So the machine is all set up, ready to cut, and I got a quarter inch compression bit on here. And that, in combination with having it go down 0.31 inches at the first pass, um, in my experience that provides as clean a cut as possible for plywood, so that there's less cleanup afterwards. So the cut here, it's pretty good in terms of using the compression bit and going down the 0.31 inches initially. Um, I've done quite a few tests with that because if you don't do that right, if you have the different speed and different bit, you get so much more fuss and it's not nearly as crisp. And of course the goal is to get as crisp a cut as possible so you don't have to do the work. Once you take it off, I mean just a little bit is to be expected, but not too, too much. Okay, I'm gonna start assembling this piece. I wanna make sure I do the right side. This is going upwards. So I assembled the sawhorse without glue to test it out, uh, but then I realized, you know what, I want to engrave Darwin over here. I tried to take this apart, but it's really in there, so I'm not going to attempt to take it apart, it might break. 
So I want to secure this to the CNC like this with this unit um, and to engrave it. Now luckily when I designed the spoil board I created some holes here for the vise to sit in. So I'm going to secure the vise and then I can hold this in. When you have a random piece and you want to engrave it with something, it'd be kind of tricky to figure out like, how do I set the machine to know where exactly to carve this? So what I've done here is I marked out the center point right here of the, what I'm engraving. When you're designing your file in the program, um, it makes sense to put the logo like in the middle of your piece of wood. Uh, but if you were to do that, you need to know where your Y and Z position is. And on a piece like this, it's like, where is that exactly? Um, it's a lot easier to set the zero point and then position the middle of the text on that zero point. Even though it looks kind of weird in the program, that way you're positioning your text uh, starting in the middle. And it's a lot easier to get a good result that way. So I got the two saw horses completed. This one I sanded and rounded the corners a bit and put some varnish on. I figured, you know, if you make nice saw horses, you might as well put some finish on to protect them so they hold up better longer. I haven't gone to this one yet, but I'm gonna do that one as well. Behind me now, I'm just about to cut up a sheet of MDF for a tabletop so that I can assemble all the uh, electrical equipment for the teardrop. Uh, on one nice big table. No, they turned out quite beautiful and immediately I'm thinking, ooh, you know, if I modify this a little bit, I can turn it into a bench or a kid's furniture or whatever. There's like a lot of possibilities. The fact that uh, everything clicks together makes it so much stronger. And that you have, you make this kind of eye beam here with this piece being vertical and having these two pieces actually connect and then this whole unit connect to these and these. Uh, I mean, it makes it just like one big thing. I guess the thing about this, I mean, this is very stable for downforce. Um, I put uh, some photos up on Instagram and somebody wrote that they have done something similar, but he did not recommend using it for a workbench. And yes, I wouldn't do that either because then you're planing and you're using kind of force in different ways. Uh, but if you're looking for a force like this to put heavy things on top of it, um, I think you can go really heavy here. <laughs> If you have access to a CNC machine, that makes this really easy. Um, but you don't need that. You can just use uh, a drill and a jigsaw and print out uh, the PDF files uh, that is gonna lay out like where to do all the holes and where to do all the things that fit together. Uh, so I'm gonna have a plan with the V-carve, the SVG and the PDF files uh, where you can either print on machine or you can print out and lay out where you want to cut everything out. Um, and as always, all my plans are available for free for my patrons at $5 and up. Um, but I'll put links to all of that stuff in the description. Initially, I was thinking about making these stackable. Um, however, this bar right here, I put further down because it's stronger that way. Now, if this bar was higher up, you could bring them further down, but it wouldn't be as strong. Another option is if you would already taken up the floor space of storing one of these, you can and I would just get little clamps and clamp them to each other. Um, that way, you know, it wouldn't accidentally fall off. Um, and then you're taking up the same amount of floor space. So that's an option uh, for storing. One of the benefits of plywood is that it's quite light. So I think what I'm gonna do when I'm not using these is just to take them upstairs where I store a lot of stuff. They're not that heavy. Yet at the same time, um, they feel quite strong and sturdy. Pretty good, I think. Now let's uh, cut out the MDF and make a top. And it says Darwin over here. Of course, you can you know, put any material on top for a table, whatever you have. So this is three quarter inch MDF. 
and I'm sitting right in the middle and it's flexing just a little bit, but not bad. Um, of course, this is a temporary thing. It's not like I'm building this most solid table for like a workbench or anything like that. The idea is to have something that you can assemble and then take apart when you don't need it anymore. Of course, if you put the weight more right on top of, of the sawhorses, you know, you don't have no issue whatsoever. Of course, you could certainly reinforce it more if that was your goal. It's always a question about being reasonable too, like what it is you're trying to accomplish here. In terms of securing, I would say either thinking you could add some brackets or you can just actually put some screws in. Clamps work really great. You just need like a table to sand on or assemble on and you don't want to like to actually screw or anything, just clamp. So next time I'm going to use this setup to put out all my electrical uh, things for the teardrop and make sure it all works, um, plug everything in, do a whole test, and then we'll see this, this whole setup in use. Uh, but at least now I can get started on that because I have a surface to work on. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Uh, there will be a link to the plans in the description below. Um, thanks so much to my patrons for supporting uh, this channel. And yeah, if you want to become a patron, you get the free plans as well. So hope you're doing well and I'll see you soon. Bye.